Hi, I'm Jerondi Thomas, and I'm your host of this edition of Demon Life. I'm joined today with NSU student, Pearlie Jones. Pearlie, thank you for joining me today. Hello, thank you for having me. <laughs> so you are very, very involved on campus. Um, you're the president of Demon Support Demons, so just tell me a little bit about that organization. Well, Demon Support Demons is a group that we created to raise awareness of sexual assault and educate students on what consent is, and you know, we just want to get the campus more aware of you know those things that go on, and we want to let students know how to report, and you know, situations like that. So you're the president, but what was your actual role in as far as Demon Support Demons goes? Well, Demon Support Demons started off as um, a project. It was we were in this communications class, and I think it was Com Thirty One Twenty. But um, the assignment was for us to help Title IX and create a memorandum of understanding with, you know, our city officials and people on campus and nurses on how to handle sexual assault. So me and a few other of my classmates, we decided that um, we would turn this into a, a school effort. You know, we wanted everyone to be involved because we realized how important this topic was. So we went through the ropes, you know, of creating this RSO, and Miss Lori LeBlanc is our advisor, our RSO advisor. So it right. was great. We're really, right, this is something that was really needed on campus, I think. So how difficult was it to, you know, create an organization? You have to write your own bylaws, by, bylaws. You have to get, you know, members and form committees. So how difficult was that? It was. It was not very difficult to do do such because everyone was so passionate about the issue so it didn't take us really long to put everything together like because we were so passionate we worked very hard but as far as getting members we struggled a little bit in the beginning because you know when it comes down to sexual assault everybody's like oh you know this is a touchy topic and no one really wants to deal with it so after a while people start to see our events and they were drawn to us because they realized we don't just focus on, you know, one thing we also focus on what sexual consent is and stuff. So a lot of people want to be included. So what exactly is sexual consent? Sexual consent is a verbal agreement. Well, sometimes it's verbal, sometimes it's nonverbal. It's just basically giving an agreement to someone during sex, like what you want and what you do not want that type of thing. And you cannot give sexual consent if you've been drinking, you know, or you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs, you know. So if someone, let's say, like two people are at a party or something and there's alcohol involved, so like whatever transpires after the party, that's not consent, even because they're not in their... They're not in their, they're not in a sober mindset to, you know, give a simple yes or a no, so it's not, it's not consent. Okay, and what, um, how have you guys been involved on campus? Like what events have you guys hosted so far? Well, just recently we had, um, we had a slut walk, which is, you know, it's about victim blaming, you know, during when someone comes forth and say they were raped, it's a lot of the times where the people say, oh, what does she have on, where was she? You know, they ask questions like that. But that's really a victim blaming mindset because no matter what a woman wears, no matter where she goes, she does not need to be sexually assaulted. She doesn't deserve it. And back to um, victim blaming, is that something, do you think people do that intentionally or are they just not understanding what they're saying? Like I think a lot of people simply aren't educated on what victim blaming is. They don't know what's proper to say when dealing with a situation like that. So that's how I feel about it. So how do we make you know, our society more informed about it? How do we go from not being informed about it to being able to um, you know, talk to our victims, be able to help our victims? Well, I think that if we all open our minds and if we put ourselves in the victim's shoes, what, what you know, happened to them and think, what if it was us? and you know like that then maybe we could move past the victim blaming because as in the words of lady gaga until it happens to you you don't know how it feels or you know what's it what's it's like you know to be sexually assaulted so if we were to put ourselves in these people's shoes we wouldn't have things to say like oh what was she wearing or you know where was she going or she shouldn't have did this or shouldn't have done that 
You know what I'm saying? And I remember last semester you guys had an event and I think it was called In Their Shoes. And I remember, you know, people, you know, marched around campus wearing high heels. So um, what exactly was that event? Okay, Walk a Mile in Her Shoes was an event that Demon Support Demons put together with Theta Chi and it was basically an event to, you know, let everyone do a walk of awareness for sexual assault. And all the men and some women, you know, they wore high heels, you know, to support, you know, the women who've been sexually assaulted. Okay. And you guys have really just been, speaking about awareness, you guys have really just like spread awareness around campus. You know, at first it was kind of just like, you know, we had Title IX in our course curriculum, but now we have an organization. You guys are giving away t-shirts. I have one of your great t-shirts in my closet right now. I think I wore it yesterday. So what more are you guys trying to do as far as awareness goes? Well, we're still planning. You have to stick around to find out. Okay. <laughs> Um, and you know, you guys are, have great support from the administration. From the administration, you guys have Dr. Dean Conan. You guys have Lori LeBlanc. So, how does it feel like to have the entire administration, like you know, having your back? It feels great to know that you know if something happens to a student, everyone's everyone is on board and ready to tackle the situation. You know, it that's very important for a victim to feel you know, that someone cares. And the support Dean Conine and Ms. Lori give us is amazing. Like they make everyone, they make everyone feel welcome to share their stories and report most importantly. And so back to the victims, what is after the sexual assault, what are the first steps? After the sexual assault, you can either report to Dean Conine, or you can report to the counselors on campus, or even the U university police. Okay, and so um, what exactly is like the reporting? Like, is it just like a form? Like, what is that? Like, what? How does the? What is the process? It is a form that you fill out, and it's basically talking, just like you and I are talking. You're going to give the details of the story, like that, or as far as you want to go to the dean, or the counselor or the police or whoever else. Okay, so it's pre pretty much up to the victim it's as far pretty, as like how far they want to go yeah, with it. It's so, pretty much up to the victim. So um, why is it that is not, is so underreported? Is like where is like the fear in it? The fear is a lot of students have a fear that they will be retaliated against by administrators, but that's not what we do here. They have a fear that they'll be retaliated against by the students if they speak out about what has happened to them, but there are policies on campus, you know, to keep things like that from happening. Okay, and also, um, one thing that you guys do is you guys do a great job with bystander awareness. So what exactly is it to be a bystander? To be a bystander, bystander excuse me, um, is to basically know that, know your surroundings and know the other person's surroundings and don't just watch something bad happen to someone. Like, say for instance, we're at a bar and I see this guy harassing another lady. He's constantly asking her, let me take you home when he knows she's under the influence. I could go over and be like, hey, you, would you like to ride home with me? Or, you know, or veer him away from her or veer her away from him rather. Yes. All right. And so how do we get away from that like bystander culture? Because, you know, we have that mindset where it's kind of just like, you know, we stick to ourselves or like, you know, or, you know, like that's not my friend or that's not someone that I know. It's mm -hmm. so, like, how do we get the courage to like, you know, you guys had a lot of courage to start this or organization. So how do we get that kind of courage? Did you guys Everyone have? should get that courage because as I explained to you earlier, we should all put ourselves in those shoes. That maybe it's not your friend or maybe it's not your sister or someone related to you, but it very well could be. What would you want to be done if that was your relative? What if it was your relative and they were alone and someone was doing that? Wouldn't you want somebody to stand up and speak and take up for your little sister or you know your friend if you weren't there? And if you could leave an issue with you know a legacy that you left behind like from this organization like what is one thing that you want to leave students with like from your involvement in demon support demons i just want to i just want people to keep having to keep doing awareness events for the students i want everybody to stay active in school and stay assertive basically 
And if a student wants to get involved in Demon Support Demons, how do they get involved? Well, we have meetings every Wednesday at 5.30 in room, <clears throat> sorry, in room 320 of the Student Union. And everybody's welcome, male and female. All right, thank you so much, Pearly, for joining me today. And I'm Javante Thomas. I was your host of Demon Life. Thank you so much for watching.